Welcome back for our winning workout special edition, the Singapore Airlines International Cup, $3 million. Before we get into it, let's hear from Alistair Donald and his thoughts on some of the runners. Not a lot happens uh, early in the week at the internationals, but I'm with uh, Alistair uh, Donald from International Racing Bureau IRB. There's no better judge. Uh, you've been around the world and watching these horses uh, here every year. Um, what's your thoughts so far on the internationals? Well, I only got in last night, so this is my first look at them today. But um, no, everyone seems pretty happy. Um, the impression is that everyone's settled in well, um, and I think they're a nice bunch of horses. Um, we'll see how they go. You mentioned Smoking Sun in particular looked well this morning. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Um, he's an interesting sort of horse. He's a little bit quirky, something of a character. Um, he doesn't. Uh, he has a, slightly his own mind about his training routine. But um, I was watching him lobbing up and down the, um, the, the straight track at the back of the um, course this morning, and um, he was going down there and sort of steady canter with his ears pricked. Well, sometimes you've got a job to get him started, so um, it's good, you know. And he placed in this race last year so the forms there he placed in this race last year the forms here he's been a little bit disappointing since but um, I think he goes well left-handed um, his trainer Pascal Barry won this race and came second um, with in this race with Gloria de Campeo who's been second with Smoking Sun so he's got you he's know clear. he's got one to put a record to put straight now speaking of horses that have been slightly disappointing since last year last year's winner of the Chris Fly Sprint Lucky Nine and also maybe military attack for Casper uh, Founce both horses haven't been their usual self well Lucky Nine's getting on a little bit um, but I still think he's got a um, you know a fair bit of ability um, he looked happy on the track today um, yeah, military attack He's, um, I don't think he's lost it. I think he's um, still a very capable horse. But, you know, you look where he's been running. He's not, you know, he's danced all the dances. He's not ducking any fights. And um, I, f I still think he'll be competitive come, come the weekend. Dan Excel, also from Hong Kong. He's the reigning champ. Uh, maybe the first horse to go back to back? Uh, could be, but it hasn't happened, so <laughs> that'll be interesting. But um, no, every chance, I think. Um, again, he's um, been running consistently, um, and um, if he runs to his best, he's going to be there. The Japanese always have to be respected. We saw them in Australia. They took a couple of horses down there, and they've got the one horse here, Minor Frost. Uh, he looked good this morning at the track. Um, he was impressive on the track this morning. He looked very happy, moved well. Um, he, He's a hard horse to assess, really, to get sort of get a feel on just how good he is. He's got bits and pieces of form. Uh, he's run quite a lot without actually uh, winning a great deal, um, and he's, you know, he seems to be consistent. Is he quite good enough? Maybe not. I don't know. I'll take that as a rhetorical question. <laughs> now, also on to we've got a horse from uh, Bahrain. Um, indeed, Hototo, um, nice, nice sort of sprinter, um, did well at the carnival in Dubai and um, Fawzi Nass has brought him here. I think he'll run well, but I think the sprint is a very hot race. Wonderful input there, but let's get on to the runners now, uh, Larry. Military attack, a winner two years ago placed uh, the next year has he got a chance to uh, run into cash here well he's only had the two unplaced runs in 2015 but um, he's too good a horse to to put a line through um, most of them are he's just shying a little bit there at track work in the morning but he's just having a bit of a nice time of it defending champion Dan Excel he won last year I was very happy with this grass work during the week can he make it back to back wins yeah I think he can um, the reason being, this race, it, it, a wise man once said he, with Red Cadeau, the trainer of Red Cadeau, this race is more suited to the mileage. You've got to be right on the pace, mm. and you know, so it's not a, a, a staying 2,000 metre race. So a horse like Dan excels, going to look the winner at some stage late. Nice piece of work. If and hits in form in Hong Kong, if he's in form, he'll, he'll go well. Minor Frost, the Japanese Raider, third in their Grade One Derby. The unknown quantity for me in the race. Has bit he got a hope to uh, run in? But I love the colour. Bit of bling. Yeah, <laughs> bit of bling very good. Now he's a little bit. Um, he's, he's. This is not a good piece of work as far as um, he gets his act together late. Yeah. But uh, he was having a good look around, so that'll be a, a little bit of a concern on race day. I'd be interested to see what uh, other gear they can put on him. Japanese horses often have the. Um, that was me filming in the background there. <laughs> he did look good going past, but. Just looking at that film, uh, he was a little bit wayward early. Six-year-old stallion, smoking sun, second last year. Does his own thing in the track, nothing too flash. Can he repeat last year's effort? Yeah, well, Alastair was quite happy with the way he settled in, but he came from near on last uh, last year, and it doesn't suit the back markers, this track. So 
I'm expecting just a place at best for him, unfortunately. Johnny, Johnny Guitar takes his place, but I think it's going to be a tough ask for him. Oddly, he's shown that this distance doesn't suit, and he's more suited to a, a you know, a crazy mile. But Pat had pretty big wraps on him last year, but you know, leading into the race, so and gets Joe Marira. So let's have a look. Keshua, his game, his gutsy. Can he uh, be rewarded with good form? Yeah, that's Baron Vorster on board. Beautiful looking horse, isn't he? Well, Larry, you caught up with uh, some of the other connections. Let's go hear what they had to say about their chances. Laurie, how's the horse travelling? Good. He worked well this morning. He had the measure of Hooker Falls over over a thousand metres at the end of uh, two rounds of work, and um, no, I'm happy with him. Beating Hooker Falls in the, in the work wouldn't be a bad thing <laughs> going into a race like this. No, well, Hooker Falls has won 13 races. He's not a bad galloper, you know, and he's always a good track worker. So, uh, and they run a pretty smart time too. And step it up. Um, the internationals we've got last year's winner Dan Excel, um, and obviously a few more coming in from overseas that are going to be hard to beat. And the locals, Pat Shaw's got a few in uh, Quachar, the Gold Cup winner. Um, but you're going to be right there, aren't you? Yeah, step it up. He's right up with them. Yeah, make no mistake. And I'm with Baron Vorster. He's on uh, Pat Shaw's runner, Coop Tardo. And Baron, uh, what do you rate his chances? Look, he's a little bit of an unknown quantity for us in, uh, in the yard. But, uh, you know, going back on his runs in Dubai, speaking to some connections, you can sort of take a line through his last run. And then uh, based on his two previous runs before that and the time when he won, um, he's shown some sort of decent ability and uh, a bit of class about him so I think in a race like this this week he should be in there with some sort of chance with the ability that he's got. Pat suggested he settled in very well uh, to Singapore which is a good sign. Yes no he settled in very well uh, you know he back in Dubai he was still a cult and he was called so he's come here in a different set of mind and uh, you know he's really done done well yeah, he's settling good he's doing his track work as what we asked from him so uh, yeah he's really behaved very well. Did you hear with Freeport Lux this is the first time the horse has traveled out of France? Absolutely he's a good horse group group uh, group two winner group three winner uh, tough horse mile and a quarter horse and uh, I hope he does well. Now he had a run in the arc, um, very rare that we get an arc runner out here, but you think 2000 is uh, probably his best trip? Yes, I think the distance to the arc was a bit far for him and uh, the, um, the ground was heavy that day and uh, he didn't like it, but uh, I think he's on his right, uh, right surface. How's he travelled? Uh, has he eaten up uh, when he's arrived? I, he travelled very well, I'm very happy, he adapted very well, uh, hasn't lost an ounce and uh, he looks very well. Uh, so, uh, all for the good. Larry, you've done some very good work during the week. Thanks to you. Slew of load. Tough ask, I thought, for this guy in this race. Yeah, he'll be a pace influence. So, um, if he's having a good day, they'll have to run over him. So, a little chance. So, uh, one runner left to go. 11 runners going to post in our $3 million main card event. Wild Geese, the last one. Good effort from him last time out. But I think he could just be out of his depth here. He needed to find the form last start. He did. Whether he can back it up, I'm not sure. It'd been a long time between drinks, but let's hope so. Larry, you're on top selection. Aero velocity, and I'm going to go with the Japanese horse, Minor Frost. That's Larry Foley. Thanks for all your help. We'll see you on Sunday.